This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. You are listening to a Bucking Spurs podcast. I am your host, Roberto Trejo Jr. This episode is very special, near and dear to everyone's hearts in Spurs Nation. It's a tribute to Tony Parker, the man on the court and the man off the court, what he's done for our organization that's going to be paying dividends for years to come. I'm going to be dropping little sound bites throughout the episode. Just some of my favorite Tony Parker quotes, moments with pop, and things like that. So, before we get into all that, there's a beat. We're going to drop it like it's hot. Wait, we got a new beat for this episode. Tony Parker's (laughs) rap song. Here it is. On s'est connus, on était gosses, c'était mon premier love Bien avant le basket, mon premier qui toujours ensemble À l'époque, on était croque l'un l'autre On était jeunes, on était fous, à qui la faute On était rien sans l'autre On était simple, on était deux, on pensait un Un seul amour, un seul avenir, un seul chemin Et je me rappelle quand je te serrais dans mes bras Tu me disais que t'aimais ça, t'étais au Nirvana Tu m'as rendu meilleur, j'avais un cœur de pierre De Cupidon, t'étais la flèche, mon cœur était la cible J'avais pas de thune au départ Pour toi, j'aurais décroché la lune sans la fusée Toujours derrière moi, quoi qu'il arrive T'étais mon pare-balle, mon bord-bonheur Today is all about Tony Parker Tony Parker came into the fold Right in the beginning 1999, San Antonio Took its first step to being one of the Best run sports franchises In modern sports History It's going to have one of the greatest players of all time. History. One of the greatest coaches of all time. History. First team to win three uh, championships in three different decades. History. Tony Parker came in and was ready to go. With the 28th pick in the 2001 draft, the San Antonio Spurs select Tony Parker. In the draft, I was excited. You know, just happy, you know. Play with a good team, play with superstars. Really excited and can't wait just to meet them, play with them. You pass the ball to a lot of players, but probably not two as good as David Robinson and Tim Duncan. Enjoy it. I will pass the ball to Duncan, we'll be no problem. <laughs> <laughs> From France all the way to San Antonio, Texas, of all places, lands in Military City to play alongside Tim Duncan. And a group of veterans, I think, who really showed him like what it took to play in the NBA. Tony Parker was just a kid with big dreams, wanted to be a rapper someday, gets to record a track with Fabulous, so if you haven't heard that. Yeah, know how we do, baby. It's the F to the A-B. Yeah, yeah. Put my man Tony P. Woo, Come yeah. on. Uh. Fabulous, yeah. Come yeah. on. Vidizzo, yeah. Come yeah. on. Come on. Come on. Tony P. Raps after the championship we won, I believe, in 2007 <laughs> um, at the parade, which was awesome. Um, and he was just going to be an all class person, you know? Like he wasn't just about basketball he was well-rounded um he was he had some sick designs in his head for some watches that were gonna hit, uh, hit the scene it was gonna explode with Tassat one day none of, none of us saw this coming coach pop turned this kid into a world-class human being and a four-time champion and when it's all said and done the second piece to arguably the best big three to ever step on the nba hardwood this is a tribute episode to the greatest French player to play in the NBA, one of the best point guards to ever play in the NBA, one of the best leaders to ever run a squad. Tony Parker, a guy with a devilish smile and an even deadlier first step. A teardrop from the heavens, quick off the dribble, 
One of the best guys that ever be in the locker room in San Antonio. Great leadership. You didn't get 30. It was great leadership and solid, solid play with the ball from your teammates. Great job. I have to trust my teammate in the tier. Exactly. Boy, was great. So we're going to talk about some of my favorite moments from Tony Parker from his Hall of Fame career. I think first off, I want to talk about his rookie season. Uh, his rookie season were full of ups and downs, and he was... He ta he's really open to talk about how Pop was hard on him. Pop was so hard on him, not only on the court, but off the court. When I was a rookie, uh, Coach Pop helped me a lot. He was really hard on me in my first couple of years. It was always hard for me to be the leader. But it's different now. He trusts me a lot more. He's giving me a lot of responsibility. You just play the game. Whatever you see, do it. He's the best coach for me uh, in the NBA history. Some of us are more gifted than I know. And, um, you know, he was a kid. That's why it's like, guys, when we have these young guys now, like DeJounte Murray and Derek White and, and, and Lonnie Walker, these guys are just kids. And, and we were all, don't forget how Tony Parker had to take his time to develop, had to take his time to become uh, a mature NBA employee, if you will. Um, the season battles that he had in... His rookie season uh you know when he had to go up against Shaq and Kobe you know it was a really tough West you know like battles every night it was hard to get in the paint it was hard to finish in the paint and Tony Parker spent the first few years playing in a league where it's dominated by big men and I think once the league started shifting Tony Parker took that experience and became one of the most dominant paint uh, finishers to ever play in this game. His rookie season was full of ups and downs, and ultimately it it uh, seeded a long, deep relationship with Coach Pop, and um, he learned to trust Coach Pop. He learned to take uh, criticism. He learned how to take the goods with the bads, and the learning curve was expedited by his character, right? I think that's something that the Spurs rely on when, when we draft players is that we need guys with good character because this learning process is not easy. And Tony Parker was a epitome of that. Um, Coach Pops and Tony Parker's relationship is the next thing I want to talk about from the get-go all the way to it finished. These two guys, you see their clips of them joking around in practice, you know, the whole like, um, <laughs> hey, Tony, you gotta stop uh, talking to these reporters, right? Or whatever. He's like, I'm just trying to be nice like you, Pop. And then, you know, like that famous clip is just an epitome of their relationship. And it's a bond that was so strong that Tony Parker never wanted to leave. Now we got a game tomorrow, so you guys are gonna lighten up on the press a little bit, right? You can't talk to those guys 24 hours a day, Tony. I don't care if they're from Paris or not. Right? All they want is a story. You want to win basketball games so you can spend some time I'm on the game and not all nice those people. Like you, I'm just trying to be nice like you, Pop. I'm just trying to be nice with the You helped me uh, becoming a, a better man on and off the court. And um, that's why I love being here because, you know, you care about us and it's not just about, you know, basketball. And it's very rare uh, in our business to have somebody like that. You know, when I talk to all the other guys around the league and in Europe, it just doesn't exist. You got as much talent as Tony Parker and myself. Do we still have to do all this stuff? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's a team thing, Bob. Tony. <laughs> Some of us are more gifted than I know, but it's a team thing. Isn't it? And welcome, everybody, to what? Wait, Brian, what are you doing? Oh, yeah, that's right. We're supposed to be recording a promo here, aren't we? Um, aren't you supposed to tell people where they can find us? Yeah, we're What the Hops podcast based out of Buffalo, New York. We like to talk a lot about beer. A little bit about music. And all sorts of random things. So be sure to go find us wherever you get your podcasts and hit up all your social medias and search What the Hops and hit that like button. Cheers. There was times where Tony Parker could have left to take more money, never did. All right, let's talk about the 2006 to 2009 Tony Parker, where he was dominant. Um, that's when the game started to shift, right? From being a paint, big man oriented league 
to uh, maybe a more mid-range gain. It wasn't a three-point league yet, right? But Tony Parker was able to get his mid-range jump shot wet because we had known 2006, he was one of the best finishers in the league, but it wasn't until that year where he started to really be consistent on that mid-range jumper. You know what it is, man. I mean, he just, he'll take you off the dribble, one, two dribbles, boom, pull up, mid-range jumper, a little bit off of the off of the free throw line wing, um, and he was able to knock it down over and over and over again. I mean, during this year, um, this little span, 06 through 09, was when we, he won a championship, right? In 2007 MVP, um, he led us against Cleveland. That was another big moment for Tony Parker, being the first European player to win a finals MVP. Um, you know, uh, Dirk came in a little bit after and did his thing, but Tony Parker was the first guy. I think Manu maybe should have been the first guy in 05, but hey, I'm, I'm not mad with, with Timmy taking it. Um, but that 2007 finals, Tony Parker's stats were uh, the best in that finals. LeBron James averaged, I think, like 21 points. I think Tony Parker averaged 22. Um, he led the, the 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 finals in field goal percentages. I mean, he was able to get to the rim whenever he want. There was no one who can guard him that year. Tony Parker just as good as any point guard in the league. He's so talented. He's so good with the ball. He can get it wherever he wants to to score every time he wants to. Boy, he's so crafty. The head fake, the speed, his quickness, he's just tough. One of the best finishers from the point guard position that has ever played. Parker double clutches and scores. Jefferson came over to help, and he still couldn't stop Tony Parker. One of the key of my success is my teardrop. Here's Parker with the teardrop. Wow, is he perfected that move? I've been doing that since I'm small. It was the only way I can get a shot off the big guys. That shot is devastating. So I tried to do that in the NBA, and it's been a great weapon for me. The teardrop by Tony Parker, one of his specialties. And that 2007 uh, season was another big season with the Parker versus Nash duo. Let's talk about that. Tony Parker versus Steve Nash. Every time those guys met, if it was in the regular season or if it was in the... Uh, the playoffs, they were epic battles, Hall of Fame games, you know, uh, Hardwood Classics. You know, those games are, are epic when you have two point guards who are in their primes and doing whatever it is they want to do at will. Um, they had no one to stop Tony Parker. Uh, we had a hell of a hard time trying to stop uh, Steve Nash. Uh, Bruce Bowen was the guy who locked him up in the playoffs. But there was many times where Steve Nash would just go off on us, just dropping dimes, dropping dimes. And Tony Parker could not be stopped. Okay, so Tony Parker was a guy that uh, that not only had great battles with other point guards like Steve Nash, but let's talk about Chris Paul, like the New Orleans Chris Paul, right? So, I mean, we could talk about the Clippers Chris Paul too. It all, it all ties in. Those two guys were kind of uh, linked together, Chris Paul and Tony Parker. I think that was a... Uh, a grind of a battle two tough guards who who like to guard each other you know usually Tony Parker won't guard the point guard but uh, or guard the point guard if he's the best player he's off you know guarding Tabo Sevilosha and whoever's not contributing on the other team's offensive side of the ball uh, but those battles were epic too Chris Paul versus Nash Chris Paul versus I'm sorry Tony Parker versus Nash or Chris Paul man those are two of my favorite battles whenever we'd go up against those two teams um the heb commercials would not be nearly as funny without tony parker in them he provided levity and tony parker's a natural on camera uh he has such great comedic timing in those commercials he understands that sometimes he's you know, there he's he's the guy that we're laughing at just because of what he says or how he says it with his accent or whatever, and he embraced it. Um, made those commercials way better than they should have been. Uh, countless, countless commercials that we're, I'm sure we're gonna get more now. Him being part of that retired group, <laughs> uh, you know, like Sean Elliott, George Gervin, David Robinson, Tim Duncan, Manu. Those guys are gonna be like that. The retired uh, HEB uh, crew, and I can't wait to see those commercials drop. Um, the 2013-2014 championship run, I 
I don't want to throw away 2013 because we, just because we didn't take home the championship. Tony Parker was still deadly, deadly in that in those two series in 2013 and 14. I mean, talking about 11, 12 years in the league, but I mean, come on, man. Tony Parker had a relatively short career because he came in so young and he put on so many miles. Uh, you know on his legs because we we're in the playoffs every single year that we had Tony Parker you know we only got we only didn't get out of the first round maybe once maybe two times I'm not sure while Tony Parker was there Tony Parker was the leader on those 13 14 teams um, he was willing just like Timmy was willing and Manu was willing to take a lesser role and let someone else take take up the slack and, and we're talking about Kawhi Leonard um, Tony Parker was that guy Tony Parker was able to to lead us um, in timeouts or in the locker room or on the court. Uh, he started, never came off the bench. Um, even though, yeah, he wasn't 2006, 2007 Tony Parker anymore. He was still a guy who can kill you on the offensive end when he needed to, but he just didn't need to that much at that point. We were playing a different style of basketball. Uh, we we're moving the ball a lot. I mean, y'all remember, it's a beautiful game, right? Um, so the the 13 14 run was epic from Tony. Tony was a huge part of that, and of course, winning our last championship that we won 2014, Tony Parker was able to take a back seat and lead by example. Doesn't need to score, didn't need to be the playmaker sometimes, but he led by example, and that's how we were able to get that championship in the books. After my first few episodes, some of my newfound fans called me a lore master, which was an honor and so epically cool. But the thing is, I desire to be known as THE lore master. So, this is the tale of the rise of an epic podcast that critics say is redefining a genre. The tale of a man who decided that his calling in life was to give a future to the past. The saga of Arjun, your lore master. Come dream with me as we go deep into our stories. If you think you've been taken to a battlefield before, I assure you, you're mistaken. So take a deep breath, let it out slowly, put some smoke in the air if you choose, and prepare to let your mind flow to my voice as we go deep. Welcome to Deep Into History, available everywhere. We're talking about the miles that Tony Parker put on his legs. <laughs> Guys, we're not just talking about NBA basketball. We're talking about FIBA. Remember during the lockout year, he went to go play for Asheville? <laughs> the, you know... Tony Parker has played so much basketball. That's why his career was a little bit shorter than most. But hey, that's fine, dude. Like Tony Parker didn't have anything else to prove. He was a four-time championship winner. Um, he's won uh, medals in the Olympic Games. You know, never gold, never the gold, uh, but silver or bronze. I'm sure he came in a couple of those. Um, he was playing in World Cups year, summer after summer after summer for France, playing with Boris Diaw and, and Nicolas Batum and, and Go Gobert and all those guys every summer and it's amazing how healthy he was i mean how many times did he ever get hurt how many times did he have a season ending injury never this guy was an ultimate athlete i mean sure yeah he wasn't jacked or super athletic he played below the rim he maybe only had like three dunks his whole career but tony parker was a guy who knew how to finish much like Kyrie Irving, you know, and, and now Derek White. Derek White plays below the rim. He can finish up top if he wants to, but he doesn't need to. Tony Parker was able to play so long because he wasn't using his athleticism as his number one tool. He was using his skill, his smartness, and um, sure, he wasn't the best def uh, defender on our team, but we had a bunch of guys that can pick up the slack for him. Um, so it's a special, special run that he had it's a hall of fame run because he's not just a great basketball player in the nba but he was a great olympic athlete uh year after year after year um and I'll, let, now let's talk about what tony parker's done off the court i mean tony parker is a president of of a basketball organization in france he started up to he was a big part of Tassat, which now is the official um watch for the nba and they run they have they own all the they make all the score uh like the shot clocks and and i think like you always see to right and that's tony parker man like let's not forget that's tony parker um he was one of the first players to go to peak right to go and get a shoe deal over overseas in china 
uh, he left Nike to do that. A lot of people are doing that now, but Tony Parker was one of the OGs to do that. Um, he is now trying to incorporate his knowledge into helping young players in the NBA develop and and not lose their money, right? He's trying to start this whole financial uh, literacy, to showing young players how to be smart and in investing and how to be smart and knowing when people are trying to take advantage of you and lose your money. I mean, he talked about Tim Duncan, like, hey, Tim Duncan made millions, but he's also lost millions because he trusted the wrong people. And he was very open about discussing that and how it can happen to anyone. It doesn't, I mean, not just not just Antoine Walker, you know what I mean? It happens to the best players of all time. And he wants to be affecting change in that area of the NBA. So Tony Parker's just, like I said, a world-class guy. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a Hall of Fame ba- basketball player, but he's also a Hall of Fame mentor, leader, uh, world citizen. You know, he it was a big part of grooming Patty Mills, who's now a big part of grooming, grooming DeJounte and Derek, you know, and, and anyone that's in our, in our, in our locker room right now. So his leadership and character has trickled down through our organization for over a decade and will continue to do that from here on out. Um, I don't see him being a coach. I really don't. I don't think he's a coach type guy. Um, but you know, he's going to be around San Antonio for a long time and he's never going to leave. And and we're going to be able to honor his Jersey retirement, which is going to be an epic night. Finally, the big three are all going to be up in the rafters. November 11th. I think it is, uh, Tim Duncan's there. Manu's been there since last year and Tony Parker will be there this year. And that's going to be a very special moment when we're finally the era has come to an end and we're going to be able to see those jerseys being hung up in the rafters just as they should be forever because they are the pillars in which this organization stands on you know they hold the roof up you know they set the tone for generations to come and tony park uh not tony parker uh, coach pop is doing the same thing with his coaching staff you know he's grooming all these coaches throughout the nba yeah but Whoever takes the mantle once coach, once he leaves is going to have the culture in them too. And it all started with Tim Duncan and Tony Parker was the next one to come into the fold, baby. And, um, you know, then uh, Ginobili came in after and then there you go. History was about to set itself. You know, 2003 champion, 2005 champion, 2007 and 2014 champion. Tony Parker, Hall of Fame, first ballad. I think uh, my toughest matchup when I was a rookie was against uh, Stephon Marbury. Here's Marbury, beautifully done. He was very strong, and when I first came in the league, I was only 160. He is so tough to defend when he's active like that. So I had a hard time to try to contain him. He with the offensive rebound, snaps it outside. Parker spins it up and in. He is an incredible point guard, one of the best in the business. Parker inside, pretty play from Tony Parker. For my game to get better, I still want to improve on my three-point shot. Parker has to launch it. I'll be more consistent on my decisions as a point guard. Tony Parker's talent is terrific. So quick, so good. This is the 28th pick back in 01. My goal is always to shoot 50%, and so I think you can always improve on that. You have so many great point guards, it's just a wonderful argument, but he has to be in that argument. Tony Parker is kind of the guy who doesn't get a lot of love from the big three. I think when you're talking about fandom in San Antonio, when it comes to all-time favorites, fan favorites, right? Tony Parker's not first, he's not second, he's not third. All right, so uh, number one is always going to be Tim Duncan. And then right behind Tim Duncan is David Robinson, because David Robinson is Military City USA. He, I mean, so is Tim Me, Wake Forest, right? But uh, but uh, David going to Navy, and uh, it was just a perfect fit with those two guys. And David Robinson, everything he still does for the city, 
you know, he's he's coming in second behind Timmy and then Manu just because he's an Hispanic guy and, and not just because that but I think I mean I'm Hispanic too and we all gravitate towards Manu because he can speak the tongue he can speak Spanish and English you know he's he's one of the best shooting guards that is of all time I've said it plenty of times I'll say it again Jordan Kobe Manu D Wade top four shooting guards of all time and I feel like I'm gonna end up putting Clay Thompson in there at the at the fifth spot, uh, but you know I, I, that's just off the top of my head. But Tony Parker kind of comes in fourth when it comes to favorite players in San Antonio, uh, but that's not a bad thing. I'm not trying to take make that a shot at him. It's just hey man, you got you got David Robinson, Tim Duncan, and Manu in front of him, and Tony's right there, and we love Tony. Uh, thank you Tony for all all that he's done for us. A uh, funny st- uh, little story about Tony Parker and and one of my experiences with Tony Parker is we one time I was in San Antonio was actually the first year I was going to UTSA it was orientation and my whole family was up there right moving me up and, and and doing that whole thing and we go to Crackle Barrel we're going to Crackle Barrel there in San Antonio and this is when he was with Eva Longoria um, that whole Eva Longoria run <laughs> talk about runs that was an epic run because he married a Texas kid, Hispanic kid, and we loved him even more for that. And she was on Desperate Housewives at the time, and Tony Parker was winning championships at the time. It was like, man, they were, they were San Antonio's perfect couple, you know? Um, but anyways, it was around that time, 2007, and we were at Crackle Barrel, and we see a big old table. You see Tony Parker walk in, Evelyn Gorio walk in, and a bunch of, you know, Tony Parker's crew, right? And, um, my family actually offered to pick up the check for their table real low key right because we knew they wouldn't have it uh so low key called the waiter and said hey is that tony parker and eva and 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 his group and they're like yeah and so we're like all right we're gonna pay for their dinner right we appreciate this guy we appreciate them we appreciate every player that steps on the floor for us um but tony parker was special and he was really really kind eva uh, was really kind um eva was like no you don't need to pay for any of their meals a lot of these guys are nobodies or whatever and we're just like hey man we love the spurs my mom was like and i love desperate housewives so you guys are like a big part of our lives at home you know in front of the tv and uh it was just a special moment tony was very great uh took some pictures and and uh and uh, signed some stuff for us right signed the receipt for us and things like that and it was just it was that was pretty cool um, so shout out to Tony Parker. Congratulations on one of the best careers anyone could ever ask for. Um, so happy to see his uh, jersey going to get retired. Uh, we're going to do another episode about that, I'm sure, once it, it comes to. Um, and I'm just so excited and so happy, so grateful, so humble that we're able to have a player like that who had the opportunity to leave and take more money and never did. He was He's the epitome of we need a sacrifice financially to keep this team together tony parker was the guy that had to do that for the most part i mean he was the market was high for for point guards of his caliber during his heyday in his prime and he was willing to take the money that was necessary for us to keep this thing going and i'm so happy he did else we would have never had 2014 in the rafters right um so shout out to tony we love you go Spurs go. If you play the whole quarter, it'll be 29 minutes. I bet I'm fine. I didn't even play for three days, but I'm 29 years old. Get back out there. Yes, sir.